a possible case of reinfection, questionable testing guidelines, and more on plasma therapy. These are a few coronavirus news stories that caught our eyes this week. Researchers reported the first confirmed case of COVID-19 reinfection. But before you freak out, know that experts consider this a textbook case of how immunity should work. Let me explain. A man tested positive for COVID-19 back in March and showed mild symptoms at the time. He then recovered, but tested positive for the virus again in August. Researchers examined the genetic material from both viruses and found that the second one showed genetic differences to the first, suggesting it was in fact a new infection. All viruses mutate through time, so this type of subtle genetic change can be expected. The good news is that the man showed no symptoms of illness during his second infection, hinting that he retained some immunity against the virus. In other words, his initial infection did not prevent the second one from taking hold, but likely made his illness milder. Since this news came out, two more cases of reinfection have been confirmed in Europe and one more in the US. The two European cases showed no symptoms or milder symptoms during the second infection, similar to the Hong Kong case, but the US patient developed severe symptoms and scientists are investigating several theories as to why. We don't yet know how commonly reinfection occurs, how often people develop severe symptoms the second time, or what these trends mean for vaccine development. That information will only come from further research. The CDC changed its COVID-19 testing guidelines this week, raising concerns from public health officials. Previously, the CDC recommended that if a close contact of yours becomes sick with COVID-19, you should also be tested for the virus. Now the CDC says close contacts don't necessarily need to be tested unless they're in a high risk group or are showing symptoms of the disease. But the science hasn't changed. We know people without symptoms can spread the virus and that identifying these people early helps prevent outbreaks. Professor Chris Johnson told Live Science, these testing recommendations make no scientific sense unless there are plans to demand isolation of all known contacts of COVID-19 patients. Especially as schools reopen, the U.S. should be testing more close contacts of infected people, not fewer. In response to this outcry from health officials, the CDC director clarified the new guidance on August 27th, saying that testing may be considered for all close contacts of confirmed or probable COVID-19 patients. And yet, at the time of this verbal statement, the official guidance on the CDC website remained unchanged. Last week, we highlighted news that the FDA would not authorize the use of plasma therapy for COVID-19 without more proof that it works. But this week, the agency issued an emergency use authorization for plasma therapy without any new data in hand. The authorization allows people to receive convalescent plasma collected from people who've recovered from COVID-19 without being enrolled in a clinical trial designed to test its effectiveness. The authorization could give more people access to plasma, but only if plasma donations also increase to meet the demand. The bottom line is that there's not yet strong evidence that convalescent plasma therapy helps people with COVID-19 recover. Only randomized clinical trials can provide that evidence, but now that people can receive plasma outside of a trial, these may be even harder to organize. Check out the links below for the full stories. For Live Science, I'm Nicoletta Lanise.